Well, one thing that we do here at Rock Jock, which is probably different than a lot of the companies do, we put a giant joint on, every arm is adjustable, and it has a giant joint on every arm. Where most suspension companies, uh, they're gonna use either rubber at one end, or they're not gonna make them adjustable, or they're gonna use rubber at both ends, or they're gonna use some other bushing that's cheaper than a Johnny joint. And since we manufacture Johnny joints, you know, one thing we do is we put a Johnny joint at both ends, so, and then also every arm's adjustable. And then we also offer some arms in double adjustable. So if you wanna, if you need more adjustment, a double adjustable is gonna give you twice as much adjustment. And then a double adjustable arm also will make it easier to adjust because all you have to do is uh, break the jam nuts and turn it. Right. Where a single adjustable arm is adjustable, but you actually gotta take the arm loose, adjust it, and then put it back in, so. Um, and that only gives you a half a turn range. Well, it, it gives you, you like you'll have about an inch of range in a mm -hmm. single adjustable. With a double adjustable, you have like two inches of range or two and a half inches of range, Got something it. like that. The thing goes from an inch and a quarter to two and a half inches. So okay. You can so, also be more precise with a double adjustable because you can do yeah. a but, quarter turn I mean, or something. That's good for some people. I know the people all it does is mess them all up. So. <laughs> <laughs> but we, Definitely. usually when we're doing it, we tell everybody, Start out by adjusting your lower arms to the same length and, and like close to the stock length. So like your like your Jeep is gonna be the rear arms I think are 19 and three quarters. So so we're gonna probably start somewhere between around 19 and three quarters to 20 inches. Okay? And then and then you you know basically the way we'll do it and and see that changes on how big a tire you have. With your 37 on there, that's you, that's all you're gonna need in the back. You know, you know, somewhere within that quarter inch. But we'll make both lower arms the same exact length. And then uh, when we do the top arms, we'll adjust your, your pinion angle with the top arms. Got it. So, so then, you know, once we get it in there and get it sitting on the springs, we'll move it to the other rack and then we'll go back and check, check your pinion angle and, you know, adjust your pinion angle with the top arms. And there's even a process to that. We, you, we adjust everything with one arm, and then you know, and then you adjust the track bar, and then we go back. And the last thing you put back in is the other arm on the on the suspension, whether it's the front or rear. And what that does, it keeps everything. Um, if you get everything adjusted, you think it's right, and then you go and try to adjust your track bar, and you go, oh, and then you realize, hey, yeah, we adjusted this all, and the and the rear end is one inch off to one side. We never adjusted the track bar. Well, when you when you you got four links, you know, and they're all in there, and then you want to move the wrench sideways an inch, it's going to put a bind in all those links. Yeah. So the idea is you adjust your bottom ones because those are always going to stay at the same length, and you put one top one on, so that adjusts your pinion angle. Then you adjust your track bar, you get everything centered where you want it. Go back and check your pinion angle, and then the last thing you do is put that that second top link on. And then all you do is adjust it out to its neutral and put the bolt in. There you go. Because that, 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 and we do that at right height. So at right height, you know, every, there's no binding anything. Everything is neutral. Nothing's pulling anything weird. You know, you know, you know. There's nothing weird going on. And that's one of the advantages to an adjustable um, top and lower arms is you could get the binding out of it. Now the lower arms it should always be the same length, unless for some reason. There's something crooked in your your deal, like it's something's not square. Brackets but, off or something. Yeah, yeah, but technically, if your Jeep's all brand new and it's all stock, those lower arms gonna be the same length. And then makes sense. And then we do that in the front and the rear. The same thing with the front. We'll leave one top arm off, get everything adjusted. You know, adjust uh, adjust your caster. Adjust. You know, there's really no camera adjustment, um, but uh, um, we just uh, on the front we leave the left front on. And then, uh, you know, get everything adjusted, and then adjust the track bar, and and then the last thing we do is hook up that top blank. And then once we get it all there, then we'll go back and take the forklift and twist it up, and then we can see, okay, hey, let's go move the rear axle back 
like a, you know a, you know a quarter inch mm -hmm. and it'll it'll center it in the wheel well better then we'll go back and readjust everything but i you know with a 37 you know it, that gets more critical the bigger the tire you go sure with a 37 staying right around that you know i think it's 19 and three quarters we'll go like 19 and three quarter to to 20 inches in that range you know sometimes i just leave them a tud touch touch longer you know and then and then uh you know once you twist it you can see hey you know if we just move the back end back a little bit let's just go let's go you know one full turn on you know so it's it's 14 threads per inch or, or let's see if it's inch short it's 12 threads per inch so if i go one full turn that's me one twelfth of an inch right so two turns would be one sixth of an inch or whatever so so we could kind of tell how far by you know you know how far we wanted to see it and and like I said, it becomes a lot more critical if you're running a 40 on there and you had it all set up and go, yeah, we're hitting, it's hitting the front, you know, you know, well, you know, first of all, if you're gonna run a 40, you're gonna be trimming everything out. So you'll go in there and trim it away, but then you can adjust the wheel back a little bit further to make everything fit exactly centered. So there's, you know. Yeah, we will be putting aftermarket fenders on. Right. And then when we get the, the uh, Curry 60s on it, that's when we'll go to 40s so because we got eight lug. Yeah. On those. And then, yeah, then you'll be able to use the same suspension. You could just yeah. adjust it out a little bit. Yeah. And it'll be really close. I mean, it's just it's just kind of getting it to the point where you can fine tune it. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I'm right there. If I just moved it back a one, you know, uh, an eighth of an inch, it wouldn't touch at all. And you just, you know, unbolt it, twist everything, you know, adjust both sides. And so. Yeah, that should be good. And that, you know, and then, you know, we're using. Uh, like on all of our suspension, like the lowers are all inch and five eighths quarter wall uh, deal and tubing, so it's it's you know it's, it's it's a pretty you know heavy duty tubing, so you're not going to be bending control arms. Right. The uppers are uh, uh, those are inch and a quarter. Um, uh, uh, they're yeah they're inch and a quarter. The one inch thread on the uppers, and that's front and rear. And then the track bars are all inch and a quarter, but the track bars are all made out of uh, uh, 4130 chromoly in the front and the back. So, and then, like I said, there's Johnny joints everywhere that could be used. The only place there's not a Johnny joint on the JL is at the lower mount for the front track bar. There's actually a, uh, a type of a uniball in there because mm -hmm. the way they made the mount, it's, it's, uh, it was actually just the way they formed the mount. The Johnny joint won't fit there, so we had to go with a little bit different joints. So we actually have a special joint made just for oh, the lower on the track bar. But we've had good luck with it. It's it's a sealed joint, has rubber um, bushings on each side, so it has oil in it. And oh. you know, we've been running them now for two years. I haven't seen one fail, so I'm, I'm pretty happy with it so far. Yeah, that's good. When you look at it, it just looks like another joint, but it's actually different. It has a it, its own proprietary uh, forging, and then the, the joint presses in there. So if the joint does go bad, you could replace it, but it's uh, it's made specifically for that JL track bar. Cool. And the front and rear track bars are adjustable as well. So. Mm -hmm.